favorite time of the week so he can play this song and smirk in the corner of his mouth. Uh, our guy, Garrett Williams from Blessing or Stress and HoustonStressons.com joining us. You can find him on Instagram at Houston Stressons, Texans commenter on TikTok and Twitter. Sad, sad not to see you. I'm, of course, on uh, on location today. I'm on assignment. We'll put it that way. Uh, Garrett, what you got for us? What are we blessing or stressing about today? Well, I definitely miss you, but I will say Thank this you. chair is much more comfortable than the one I normally use, so I'm not too mad you know, about Blankers that. Blankers didn't say that he missed yeah, that. How the hell did that come out of your mouth? That's, that's very disturbing. Don't it's okay. Him. I have to, you know, stroke both sides of the. Jeez. Hey, of the crazy! Yeah, that whatever was a that was a pause moment right you're there by me. On his side. I hey, awesome. crazy! Yeah, I'm usually good about stuff like that, but um, hmm. you yeah, know, you caught me slipping on that Which one. Which part? Hmm. Um, oh boy! I'll just I'll just stop and get into the segment before <laughs> Maybe we get should. too much more trouble yes. here. Um, blessing or stressing? First up, we got are we blessing or stressing the Texans falling short to the Lions? Um, I mean, obviously, this was a devastating loss, one of the worst losses we've had as a franchise. Some people are putting it up there with the Kansas City playoff loss, the Bill O'Brien era. Um, I will say my mood now, you know, a couple days uh, post loss as opposed to walking out of NRG is drastically different. Um, so I'll, I will stay neutral to mildly blessing. Um, obviously, you know, five interceptions, you should win the game. But I've had time to kind of digress it and, and dissect it and see exactly what those interceptions were like. You know, it can be a little misleading, but simply what it boils down to is going up to the game. If we said, hey, we have no Will Anderson, no Nico Collins, and we only lose by three at home on a last second field goal that barely makes it, would you be happy? My answer would be hell yes. And so with that in mind, you know, the sting being worn off because of that, I'm mildly blessing. I'm stressing it, and I'll flip the script on you and say, but if I told you going into that game that you would have five turnovers on the Lions and Jared Goff and still find a way to lose the game, how would you feel? And that would be Touché. how I feel. Like, the fact is, is you're not supposed to lose a game when you potentially could have had six turnovers. You think about the ball Stingley dropped that he could have had, too, where they were True. comparing him to Willie Mays wearing 24. The fact is that, that Goff literally could have thrown six picks in that game and you found a way to lose. And I think when we were looking at the schedule at the start of the year and we were trying to dissect wins and losses, if you would have gotten this game, which a lot of people were wondering, you know, this was going to be a true test of the barometer where they were. Mm -hmm. If you won this game, now you don't have to have as much riding on the fact that you can't lose any of the next three games because of the rest of the schedule. Now there's even more pressure on the fact that you can't slip up against a, a, what supposedly is a bad Cowboys team yeah. and, and you know the, the games that are going to follow where you're like eh, it's, there's a little extra on it as well and we still haven't solved all of the offensive line and everything else to where I'm stressed yeah I'm gonna I'm gonna mildly bless this too I think there were a lot of good things that happened in that game uh yes you need to finish in the NFL yes you want to win in the NFL yes you blew a 16 point lead uh, there, there were a lot of positives, and I, I do feel a lot better watching the tape on it. Like I, I feel better after watching the tape on it. Uh, context is obviously king. Like you're up 16 points, you got to win in the NFL. Uh, even if you're doing nothing offensively, you need to go out and make the stops and get out of there with a victory. But the whole like, oh, this is one of those losses that ruined your season. I, I think it's the opposite a little bit. I think there's a, I think there's a decent chance that this could kind of be like the epiphany moment of, okay, this is what it takes for us to reach our potential. This is what it's going to take for us to be the best version of ourselves. And there were things that I saw in that game where I'm like, dang, that's a, that's elite. Uh, the defensive line play I thought was pretty dang elite. Uh, yes, there are always things that you need to fix, but the whole like this is the worst loss in franchise history. I saw some people saying the two losses the, you know, in franchise history that are the worst are the, the playoff loss against Kansas City and this. Come on. <laughs> come on. So I, I'm with you. I'm lightly blessing it. Yeah, and, you know, one thing we need to remember, too, is, you know, we're still a young team and we're learning how to win these big games and to be a legit contender. Obviously, expectations this offseason put a lot of pressure on us to expedite that process. But, I mean, we really only, quote, unquote, tanked for two years and we're only a year and a half into this, you know, first window of competing. So when you look at it from that perspective, you know, this was a big growing moment for us. And as long as we grow from it, it won't be as much of a stress as, as what it is now. So. Um, yeah, next up, I got uh, some, you know, decisions. Uh, are we blessing or stressing the decision to kick the 58-yard field goal uh, by D'Amico at the end of the game? Um, I'm big stressing this. I get that Kaimi is elite and has hit these long field goals all season, but to me, it's just not a sustainable model. 
I think it boils down to D'Amico Ryan's once again being a defensive minded head coach. His his mindset is probably is, you know, I think he'll make this field goal. If not, my defense will stop them and not get one single first down because they got a short field. Um, my logic is if you're willing to kick the field goal and miss it, you might as well go for the fourth down and be willing to miss it. Or I wouldn't even put it too far past the second option, even being a punt. The way your defense was playing most of the game, um, you know, I know they scored in the second half, but they really didn't drive the length of the field. If you pin them down, uh, it's kind of reminiscent to the Bills game where, you know, we were forced to punt because of a grounding uh intentional grounding penalty but we ended up pinning the bills back on their own one and they went three and out and then we ended up kicking the game winning field goal so i was big stress in that decision yeah i was blessing it i was fine with it we talked about it the other day the one i threw out the punt possibility too and i thought that that was a legit possibility that they might consider um i wasn't as big on considering going for it jeremy ran the numbers in terms of what the analytics said i just felt like He felt kind of the momentum sliding away. He felt all that, but he knew that his kicker had been rock solid all season long. And he, and he, I'm sure he wasn't at that point. We had showed them his emotions. The, the, the cameras caught him several times where he was kind of disgusted with what was going on offensively, or at least he wasn't happy to where I think he felt like, Hey, with everything we've seen with the offense, but also the fact that I know kaimi has been nails all year, I'm going to give this a shot. So I wasn't, I, I wasn't stressing it. Yeah, there's been uh, there's been moments like last year where D'Amico was punting whenever they had 54, 55 yard field goal attempts. So you've seen D'Amico's trust in Kaimi grow from where it was a year ago. He he would have easily punted in this spot last year. And I agree with your your mindset from D'Amico, where okay, if we don't either make this field goal or if we go for it and we don't get the first down, we think we're going to force a three and out and get the football back. And I think that that mindset was proven with his usage of the timeouts, uh, taking timeouts immediately Crazy. on the defensive side of the ball whenever you know the Detroit was still out of field goal range. I think it speaks to that D'Amico mindset of, okay, uh, we didn't make the field goal, but we're going to get a three and out. We're going to get the ball back. I don't like the punt there because I really don't like the idea of playing for the overtime. Uh, if you're punting now, you're playing for the OT. Uh, yeah. So I don't love that one. I think it's a coin flip decision. I'm, I really wouldn't have been mad at either one. If they decided to go for it, I'm here for it. I totally understand. I was a slight lean to kicking the field goal. So I'm blessing it as well. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously one of those hindsight is 50-50 moments. I mean, Kaimi, he's shown he can make those kicks. It's easy to criticize it in hindsight, but, you know, it's I it's tried a tough to ask one. the question too, Garrett, on Twitter because I hate the hindsight revisionist history yes. people. Uh, so I try to get like I you can sense when these tough ones are coming, right? Like everybody could sense this was a difficult decision. Uh, would go for it fourth and four, kick a 58 yard field goal. So I try to I try to like post it on Twitter real quick to see where people's mindsets were then before having the benefit yeah. of hindsight. What were the results? Um, uh, most of them were kick it. Most of them were yeah. kick it. And and I, I also posted mine. I, I said I would have kicked it there. I, I would have kicked it. Yeah, I didn't love what the offense was doing. I thought they were having a difficult time moving the football. I don't think converting a fourth and four there is that high of a probability. Is it a higher probability than Kaimi making a 58 yard field goal? Again, I think it's very, very close. Brian talked about the negatives of missing the field goal versus not converting the fourth and four. And there's better benefits of going for it and missing the fourth and four. So I, again, I think it could go either way. I'm a slight lean to the field goal. I think we can all agree too. That's about as tough as a decision you can have where like either side you can see. So, I mean, that's definitely not an enviable, enviable position mm-hmm. to be in for sure. It's a big word there. Yeah. I had yeah. A trouble saying it. That's not only that's a content creator, huh? Pause. Yeah. yeah Incarnate word education. <laughs> um, anyways. Yeah. I'll use my education to read off my next uh, <laughs> blessing or stressing, which will be the, Cowboys game uh, being not as anticipated as we thought. Are you stressing the fact that this isn't hyped up as big as what we thought it would be? I mean, going into the season, this was Monday Night Football, the Battle of Texas. It was, you know, two previous playoff teams from the year before. Uh, You know, Dak Prescott, supposedly this high-powered offense, and it was potentially, you know, two good teams. But uh, it turns out the Cowboys aren't anywhere near what we thought they would be. And it turns out the Texans, albeit 6-4, and don't feel like they're 6-4. and I'm actually blessing that it's not as big of a game because we need this game desperately. Um, I would be stressing if they were uh, a winning team right now and and we were in this position. So um, they're kind of like a wounded dog. So this couldn't have came at a better time, in my opinion, to get a bounce back from that devastating loss to the Lions. They're, I believe, 31st in the league in rush yards allowed. So this could be a simple game for us just to run the ball to to take control. And I really see it going like the Patriots game. It's a game you win with dominating defense. They have absolutely nothing on offense with Cooper Rush and or Trey Lance. Um, lean on your defense, short field position. 
um, and then ground game, and it should be a route. I'm blessing it because of the fact that you need, you know, I'll throw into what you said. You've, you've, you've blown a game, and you've been embarrassed twice on national TV in the last two weeks. You, you blew a game to the Jets where you looked like you were overmatched against a Jets team that everybody was hope a lot of people were expecting were going to be on this massive run to go upward, and then they got their doors blown off by the Cardinals. So that's a bad loss. And then you come in, and as good as you played in the first half and the turnovers you got, the fact that the way you lost and how everybody was looking at it as the only game going on as how the hell did you lose that football game, you need a game where you can blow someone else's doors off and prove to the world, not only to yourself, and get some momentum back to say, look, we are a good football team. We're going to do damage to a team that isn't a good football team like the Dallas Cowboys and show you that we belong. And so I think I'm blessing the fact that this game isn't what we thought it was at the start of the year. Yeah, this is a big bless. I don't I couldn't care <laughs> less about the sizzle, the marquee, the cachet of the game. Give me victories. Give me wins. I'm a path of least resistance guy. I don't if you get to the playoffs, I want upset, upset, upset of other teams that you're not playing. And that way you get the weaker team in every single round. Uh yeah, give me the weaker team at all times. Do you want to play a team that has an injured quarterback or do you want to face a team that has one of the best quarterbacks? Give me the injured quarterback. Uh, I'm blessing. I don't need cachet. I don't need big nine, uh, big time sizzle on Monday night. I need, I need dubs. I need wins. So a small follow up for y'all. What, what would the score need to be for y'all to feel comfortable? Like at least a ten plus point victory, wow. or is that going to cut it? For me, I would like to see a, a, a multi score game. I would love to see a two touchdown game. I know the Eagles won by way more than that, but when you look at it. I would like to have a comfortable win. You said the Patriots game. I would like to have a game where they are comfortably in control throughout, mm -hmm. that they score in the second half, that they look like the, the, the game, the outcome of the game is never up for grabs, and, and that they're dominant for both halves of the of, of the football game. Yeah, I uh, I think context is king because it goes back to like the Lions thing, right? If you lose a game by three to the Detroit Lions when you're without the pieces that you would have liked, uh, you would have taken that before the start of the game and you, you would think that you felt great about it. But you let the game play out. You see the way that it goes. And you're like, I didn't feel very good about it. So I don't really love doing the whole margin of victory thing. Uh, Multi-possessions is always better because like usually that's a pretty comfortable lead however you get there, right? Unless you're scoring a late touchdown late. But what if, what if you're down – the whole game and then you like rally back in the fourth quarter like you get one really long fluke touchdown and then a late pick six and you win by 10 are we really feeling great about that so yeah. like i'm a i'm a context over margin of victory or whatever well i hope joel's you know prediction is correct because i'll be at the game with my wife nice. who Look is a cowboy fan yeah that was so. a flex <laughs> yeah, a flex big bags going to arlington yeah you know you gotta <laughs> represent but um that's kind of why i got the shirt too the will anderson if you're not from houston you know Nice. Got to represent the city. You want to read the bottom part of that? Uh, it says it's got like an asterisk on it. I think you know you can probably figure it out. Uh, they can't see it, but yeah, you could have read it. Yeah, but yeah. don't. I would suggest <laughs> it if you want to be back next week. I like I like coming to the studio. <laughs> That's right. There you go. <laughs> you got one more, Garrett? Yes, sir. I do. Uh, are we blessing or stressing the outlook of the offense the remainder of the year with Nico Collins back? Oof. Obviously, the offense has been the hot topic, uh, the area of struggle, uh, specifically the second half. Um, you know, it seems that Nico has not only, you know, shielded the struggles of CJ Stroud, but potentially Bobby Slowick. Um, and you kind of hate to say it or I hate to say it, but I'm blessing what the offense will look like with him. I mean, this is what happens when you have a premier top three, top five receiver, uh, that big X receiver who can do it all. Uh, you look at the first, you know, four or five, six games of the season with Nico and CJ. I mean, he literally it makes it his life easy. All he has to do is just look for Nico, and he's there. I mean, it was evident last game the scramble drill. How many times do you see CJ scramble and no one's available? Whereas now you insert Nico Collins. As soon as he scrambles, boom, Nico's wide open. So I'm blessed, and I think things will look drastically different with Nico. I'm stressing because of the fact that you're not wrong, but everything is correlated to the offensive line, and the offensive line isn't fixed. And the fact that we knew that the shortcomings of Kenyon Green were pass blocking. But we knew that he could run block really well. And he did that to where Joe Mixon had a lot of big games. So I, I think that as much as Nico's back, I do agree with you that in the scramble drill and when he goes off script, when he has to move the pocket and get out of there, Nico's a security blanket. Their timing is impeccable. They're always able to do what they need to do. But at the same time, in order for this entire offense to click the way it needs to click, it doesn't start with Nico Collins. It starts and ends with that offensive line. And I still don't think they've done enough to convince me that their pass blocking and or their run blocking from week to week are going to be consistent enough for me to feel good enough to bless it.
I'm going to slightly uh, bless it. Uh, I think Nico Collins will look a lot different. The, the offense will look a lot different with Nico Collins. I think the protection, it's it's the old Billy Bean thing, right? Like you lose a star player, you're not going to fill that position with a guy as good, but how do you improve it? You improve it on the aggregate. Uh, I think that's how you're going to have to improve this offensive line in the aggregate. And I think Nico Collins missing the last five games. It hurts at not having your top weapon. Uh, you know, Joe Mixon wasn't, all that healthy whenever Nico was going. Uh, yes, you're without digs. Tank's playing at a higher level. I did think that the offensive line was better this past week than it had been. Uh, the coverage calls were a lot better with Jared Patterson. I thought that Stroud had more time, so maybe that could lead to him regaining you know, this confidence in the offensive line and not being so hesitant uh, whenever he's quarterbacking. So I'm going to be optimistic about it and go with a slight blessing on it. Oh, but I, I am like scared it. of the offensive line, though. It's a blanker's I mean, point. Like, Joel, I agree with everything. It's hard to argue with Joel's point. I mean, oh, for sure. <laughs> there's no, there's no way around that. So, very good, great stuff, Garrett. Did you have something to follow up there, Blank Man? No, I was just going to say. I mean, as well as Patterson has done, we've given him his flowers because he's done better than what was really bad. Yeah, how, how what's the ceiling <laughs> with him? Right, that's the biggest question. Eric says, I want to win where Branham is complaining about D'Amico not taking out Stroud and Mixon late. That tracks. That's something I definitely would do. Eric knows me well. He's got me pegged. Uh, Pause. Garrett, Garrett, hey, <laughs> phrasing! Garrett Blessing or Stressing. Is that Granado? Who is that voice? That's not Granado. No, it's from the TV show Archer. Well, okay. It's nice that I have these headphones and I can hear like the little sound bites now. I feel like I'm <laughs> yeah. more in tune with what's going on. When you Welcome really feel like a radio guy, then you carry your own <laughs> headphones like people do when they want to get in the business. Maybe uh, like by week 17, I'll start having my own headphones go. in. Good stuff. Blessing or Stressing with Garrett. HoustonStressons.com. Find them on IG at Houston Stressons. Text and commenter on TikTok and Twitter. I'm going to dip out. going to go call some Cougar basketball. What disappointed you most with the Texans through 10 games? 